Hey guys, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. So here I have two different notebooks, the Hobonichi A6 notebook, as well as the Galen Leather B6 notebook. Both have the Tomoe River paper. And what I'm gonna be doing today, or really over the course of a couple of days, depending on how long it's gonna take me, is set up my ink journal for 2023. So this was my ink journal really for 2022. And it was organized in such a way that I had different sections for it, that I had a currently ink section, my pen section, bottled ink section, and sample inks. I didn't really keep to the sections. I think I put way too many pages in each section thinking that I wouldn't need them all. And while I love looking back at this, I think it will help me organize the B6 2023 journal better. So what I'm planning to do for this uh, B6 journal is at the beginning, which I've already marked, I'm gonna have that, but this is also gonna be a table of contents or index. But then what I'm going to do at the very beginning is swatch all my inks. That is right all of the inks and I don't actually even know how many I have. So that will be interesting. I will be swatching all of my bottles and all of my samples. So I have an inventory and know exactly what I have at the beginning of 2023. And then from there, it will basically work chronologically. I will have my currently inks, any new pens I acquire, any new inks I acquire, and it will just go as like an archive or a timeline or a proper journal of my fountain pen and fountain pen ink journey. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start swatching my bottled inks and I'm gonna do this as a voiceover because otherwise you would be here with me for hours. Although I'm sure you would love that. But then I will go ahead and get started. The first inks I'm gonna swatch are from Colorverse. The first is Colorverse Alpha CMA and I really love this blue. However, it's a little dry and now I kind of wish I hadn't purchased a full bottle of it and just stuck to a sample. The next one is Colorverse Alpha PSE or Alpha Pisces. This is a gorgeous green, absolutely gorgeous green. And I'm glad that I did purchase a full bottle of this one. Both were from Pen Chalet and I got them at a great deal from uh, Pen Chalet. The next one in the bottle collection is Diamine Amazing Amethyst. Such a gorgeous purple. This one I purchased, actually, no, I didn't purchase it. This one was given to me by Olga in a an ink swap hosted by Simone on YouTube. She was so generous. She gave me four bottles, full bottles of ink. The next one that she gave me was Diamine Iridescent Robert, and it's got this gorgeous burgundy color with a lime, it's like a lime green sheen is the only thing I would call it. The next one that I have is uh, Diamine Meadow. And this is one of the first bottles I believe that I had purchased. And I purchased this from Stylus Fine Pens local to me here in Edmonton. And it's such a gorgeous green. I feel like it's more of a normal green. I really like this color. I feel like I can use this at any time of year. The next one after that is Diamine Red Dragon. It doesn't sound like it would be, you know, a really nice red to use at any time of year, but Red Dragon is a very normal, typical red, and I really, really like it. Again, purchased from my local stylist. The next ones are all Diamine Shimmer Tastics, and I went through a whole phase of just Diamine Shimmer Tastic inks, and then I went off them a bit and then went back on them. And this Cocoa, oh, sorry, Caramel Sparkle is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, that kind of orangey brown with the gold shimmer. Stunning, absolutely stunning. And then the one after that is Diamine Shimmertastic Cocoa Shimmer. These I feel like are both for kind of fall or winter, but they're just gorgeous shades. Again, bought from my local stylist. Now, would I have purchased full bottles of these, you know, knowing what my collection was gonna look like this time? Probably not. I would have probably been happy with just the samples. This is kind of the lesson I'm learning with all of my bottles. Then the next Shimmertastic ink that I have is Diamine Enchanted Ocean. This is a beautiful, like, teal, almost like a Sukio, like a Pilot of Roshizuku Sukio with silver shimmer. And there's a tiny bit of red sheen in it as well. This one is gorgeous. I'm glad I bought a full bottle of this one. Heavily influenced by my friend Adrian. The next ones, some people would count these as samples, but I count these as bottles because they come in like a really nice glass bottle. And this is Ferris Wheel Press. Uh, it was their Finer Things collection. And the first one here is Oyster Hour. 
These come in five milliliter glass bottles. Again, I bought this uh, at my local stylist. I really love Oyster Hour. It's a perfect, like really nice brown uh, ink. And I'm glad that these are only five milliliters. I don't think I could have used a whole full size bottle. Next one is Spruce County Post. And I love this one for fall and winter. Such a great green color. And then the last one in this finer thing set is Ferris Wheel Press Steeped Umber. Again, a really nice like maroon brown. Really, really nice color. And this one flowed so, so well in my Narwhal Nautilus pen that I used a couple months ago. Such a great little set. Perfect for fall. I don't... I, I don't regret buying this one. This was a great set for me to buy. The next one after that is her, like all of my Herbon inks and they come in different size bottles. So there's the, the ten, oh, what size is this one? 10 mil bottles that I bought from Penn Chalet and Ombre de Bourbonnie is one of those 10 mil bottles that I bought from, um, What's it called? Pen Chalet. And then the next one I bought from Pen Chalet as well was Poussière de Lune. I had originally purchased a sample of this and loved it so much, but I didn't want to commit to buying a full bottle of 30 mils that they normally sell. So the 10 mil bottle is the perfect size for me, and it's such a gorgeous purple. The next one, yes, this one I had to buy the full 30 mil, sam 30 mil sample, 30 mil bottle of, and this one I had bought from my local stylist because her bondings are actually very well priced. And this is Rue d'Ancre, Rusty Anchor. I love dusty pinks like this, one of my favorites. And then the last one that I bought from Penn Chalet is her Bonne Vert de Gris, and this also comes in a 10 mil bottle. Again, the 10 mil bottles are just the perfect size for me. I don't feel like I'm going to run out, but 10 mils is actually a really good amount of ink that will last not, you know, way past my lifetime, but enough for me. So the next one is actually an ink that was sent to me by Le Bon. This is Le Bon Poseidon Green. And this is a really, really nice, like in the camera, it looks more light teal, um, closer to blue. It's a really, really beautiful ink, and these flow very, very nicely as well. This one that I am sampling is Noodler's Lexington Gray. And I purchased, I think, three different Noodler's inks, and this is my last bottle, which I am actually giving away. I'm not a fan of Noodler's inks in general. This was a great ink for me to start off with. And you can see there, I got a little bit of Le Bon in there and trying to get it out was a nightmare. This next bottle is Pelican, Pelican Edelstein Golden Barrel. And this was given to me by Olga in my ink swap. This is such a beautiful bright yellow color with gold shimmer. And I cannot wait to use this actually in January. And then come all of my Pilot Eroshizuku bottles of ink. I didn't need all of the bottles of the Pilot or Roshizuku inks. I mean, Chiku Rin is a gorgeous color, but I don't need as many Pilot or Roshizuku inks as I do, especially in these big bottles, these 50 mils. Um, but I bought them <laughs> because that's what my local style is offered. And I love uh, uh, Inaho. It's a beautiful rice color. It's got brown and kind of olive green. One of my favorites. But again, the, my lesson here is that I do not need all of these bottles. I will not be buying any more bottles of ink in my future. The next one is Con Pecky. And this was one of the first ones that I purchased upon recommendation really from Brian and Drew of Goulet Pens. I don't use blue that often, but it is actually looking on camera. Really nice bright blue with a little bit of red sheen. A really good ink that my husband actually really loves. Next is Kosumosu, and this is actually a really cute pink, like cotton candy cute pink is the only way that I can really describe it. Again, from my local stylist. And then the next one is Kujiku. Again, I don't know why I purchased a full bottle, but I will be keeping it because it is a beautiful teal color with that red sheen. It's, base, it, it's a little bit lighter version of like Enchanted Ocean without the shimmer. The next bottle of Pilot Orochizuku is Shinkai. And I bought this thinking that I would really only stick to blue blacks. I, I really thought that I wouldn't venture out into more colorful inks, which is why I bought a full bottle of this. I will keep it because I think my husband likes using these types of colors. He isn't as adventurous with ink colors as I am. The next one is Pilot Orochizuku Shin Ryoku. 
And it's really, I feel like this is more of a forest green. I really like this green. I do need to use it more. And I did say when I kept doing my uh, paintings is that I need more greens. And this is a really good one. The next one, I don't have a 50 ml bottle of this. This one was actually a smaller 15 ml bottle. It's Pilot Iroshizuku Sukiyo. And I really like this. I use this for a lot of um, pen reviews or, you know, first impressions of pens because if I use a consistent ink, then I'll be able to know whether it's the pen or the nib versus the ink being the issue. And I really like this color. And I love the fact that it's in a 15 mil bottle size. I wish actually that I purchased all of my Pilot Oroshizuku inks in that 15 mil size. The next one is Roar and Klingner Alt Gold Groon. Did I say that right? Roar and Klingner Alt Gold Groon. And I really like this one. This was such a well-priced bottle that I couldn't pass it up. I bought this again at my local stylist and I can see myself really using this whole bottle. The next one after that, we are going into my Sailor Inks. And the first one is Sailor Ink Studio 1, 2, 3. And again, I bought this, I bought the bottles just based on the fact that I thought I would like it. I didn't think that I wouldn't use the whole thing. I mean, it's only a 15 or 20 mil, it's a 20 mil bottle, but I don't think I'm really going to use it all. The next one after that is Studio Sailor Ink Studio 162. It's more of a green color. I bought this off of Fiden Pens at their anniversary sale. And I like it, but it's not one that I've used very often this past year. So I'm hoping that by cataloging these, it'll encourage me to use these more. This one, Sailor Ink Studio 237, I first bought as a sample. Loved the sample so much that I had to buy a bottle, which I bought from Fiden Pens. And this one I do not regret buying. It's such a cute pink I love this pink and I do need to use this more. The next one at the very bottom is Sailor Shikiori Yozakura and it's kind of a dusty pinky purple. You guys know I like those types of colors and I'm really glad I bought a bottle of this one. I just need to use it more is the, is the whole point here. I need to use these more. Then the next one I have is Sailor Manyo Haha. I bought this from Pen Chalet and... I really thought I would use it more, but I, I think it really depends on the pen, this particular ink. In some pens, it's very dry. In other pens, it's great. So I don't reach for it as much as I should, but it is a really great chromo shading ink. The next one that I do have is Sailor Monyo Kuzu, and I love this. I love the burgundy colors, the more kind of dark red wine colors, and it's got a really great gold sheen to it as well. Absolutely fantastic. The next one is Sailor Manyo Nekoyanagi, and this is a beautiful chromo shading purple. Again, I don't use it as often as I should, and this is a huge bottle. These come in 50 ml bottles. I don't know how, how I will ever get through these. And then the next one, thank goodness this was a smaller 20 ml bottle. I had sampled all of the Yurameku inks, and this one was my favorite. It's Sailor Kitsune Biori. It's this dusty brown, dusty brownish pink. Love it. I bought this off of Fiden Pens and thank goodness it's only 20 mils. Oh, thank goodness. And then this one here is Troublemaker Inks Kelp Tea. I bought this at Wonder Pens when I was there for the Planners Gonna Plan conference in Toronto. And I bought this because one, it was on sale, but two, I really love the colors of this ink. It's like a rice green with hints of pink. Beautiful. And then the last ink bottle that I have is from my ink swap from Olga, and she sent me a bottle of Visconti Cafe Terrace at night. Never tried a Visconti ink before, so this one is a really, really interesting ink. And in this drawer is where I keep all of my ink bottles. Yes, all 38 of them. Next, I need to swatch all of my ink samples. So I have a few in here. I've got a few in this drawer here and I've got a few more there. So this is gonna take me some time. The first ink sample that I'm swatching is actually one of the most recent ones that I got. This is from Leanne of Leanne Likes and she sent me Colorverse Brunch Date. And I've been so curious to try this and I'm so glad that she sent it because you guys know how much I love the dusty pinky browns, really pretty. The next one is Diamine Shimmertastic Arctic Blue. I purchased a whole bunch of samples from Pen Chalet. I like Pen Chalet samples because they give you four mils, which can last you quite a while. And I love the 
shimmeriness of this, but also there's a bit of red sheen there, a really, really interesting ink. The next one from Diamine, which I also bought from Pen Chalet, is Blue Lightning. I think I went through a phase where I thought I need to buy some wintry blue inks. And funny enough, I have not used these yet. But at least they're only samples and not full bottles. So it's a lighter blue, kind of, I feel like, similar to Con Pecky with Silver Shimmer. And again, you know how I went through a phase where I didn't like any shimmers and then getting back into them. I do need to use these samples because I have... 82. I think it's 82. The next one is Diamine Holly and this one was also sent to me by Leanne. I love this green. I used this in December this month in my Pelican 140. It's a gorgeous green with this red sheen. Really really pretty ink. The next one I have is another one from Diamine and it is called A Leap of Faith and this one was given to me by Sandy of Sand Doodle's desk. It's this really dark dark blue with a little bit of sheen to it. And I really don't know when I'm going to use this. I feel like this was part of an ink vent calendar from either last year or the year before. The next one after that is Diamine Lilac Night. And this one was sent to me by Cecilia of Scientist Plans. Notice I'm using a different pen here because the actual nib on my glass pen broke a little. So it wasn't working properly. And here I am using the Sailor, ink dip, Sailor Dip Pen, which actually isn't my favorite. But Diamine Lilac Night, a really pretty purple. Next one is Diamine Mistletoe, also sent by Cecilia, another pretty green. I'm so glad that people are sending me these greens because they are really pretty colors, perfect for winter and perfect for Christmas. After that, I have a Diamine Purple Dream and I actually ended up finishing this sample while doing this swatch here. And I bought this from Goulet Pens. It was so nice to be able to try the sample and I did use it in a pen but I am glad that it is done. I don't know if I'll ever buy a bottle of that, but having a sample of that was just enough for me to be able to really know what I like, and that's what I like samples for. The next one after that is Dye Mine Steel Blue, and this is one of the first ones I ever purchased a little over a year ago, and this is from Wonder Pens, and it's a nice kind of teal color, but the thing with Wonder Pen samples is that the vial they come in is so small that you really need a syringe to be able to fill your pens from it. And yes, I did spill a little bit. And then the last one on this page is Diamine Sub-Zero. This one was actually sent to me by Pen Chalet when I purchased my Leonardo Memento Zero Grande pen. So it was a free sample they included. It's a really pretty light blue shimmery ink. Again, perfect for winter, especially when it says Sub-Zero. And we've had those Sub-Zero temperatures here in Edmonton recently. The next one, the next group really, is more Diamine Syrah. I bought this again from Wonder Pens and I really like the kind of dark red ink with a bit of sheen. Some people would say it's very similar to Ox Blood or Writer's Blood, but I, I kind of prefer this one. The ink flow on this one isn't as wet as Writer's Blood. Then the next one after that is Diamine Tyrian Purple. I love this one. Really, really love this one. I bought this actually. It came as a random sample from Goulet Pens, and I'm so glad I got this. I love this purple. I'm very tempted to buy a smaller ink bottle of this or maybe just another 4 mil sample. And then the next one is Diamine Writer's Blood. Very, very wet ink that I got from Goulet Pens. Again, I get it. From, got it from a random sample pack, and this was included in here, and I always wanted to try it. I don't think I will buy a full bottle of Writer's Blood, though it's a little bit too wet for me. Then the next one is Dominant Industry and Wonder Pens Collaboration. This one's sent to me by Leanne, and she had labeled it as Earl Grey Tuna, but I actually think this one is Ginger Chicken. I looked at the video done by Carrie of Pens and Tea, and this was the same color, so I believe it is Ginger Chicken. And then the next one is also Dominant Industry and Wonder Pens sent to me by Cecilia. And this one is Earl Grey Tuna. So these two inks are actually named after the two cats uh, of the owners of Wonder Pens. And I really like that they have inks now named after their pets. It's really, really cute. And this one is more of a gray color, which matches the color of their cat. Then the next one are all of the, the Ferris Wheel Press inks. And this one is Atlas Iron Ore. This one was sent to me by Corolla. And if you are not following her, please do. She has amazing, amazing paintings with the fountain pen inks. Then the next one is Ferris Wheel Press Blue Barrel Tonic. And I have a sample actually from Van Ness, but also Cecilia of Scientist Plant sent this to me. I used this recently in my Cross Botanica Green Day Lily pen, and it's a really beautiful kind of 
periwinkle blue with rose gold shimmer. Then the next one is Blushing Mushroom. So this is a lighter purple with a rose gold shimmer. Again, beautiful. Ferris Wheel Press really do their shimmer inks beautifully. And then the one after that is Ferris Wheel Press Buttered Popcorn. I bought this one off of Venice and I wanted to try it actually seeing Simone try this, but also this was one that I think Drew on Goulet Pen said that they really wanted to stock in their store. And I do like a bit of pop of the bright yellow with the orange. We always need that, right? And then the last one on this page is Ferris Wheel Press Chidori Cherry Blossom. This one was sent to me by Cecilia. And this is very, very light pink with a light uh, rose gold shimmer. And it is a very beautiful pink. But I really do caution using this one. You really have to use this one with a broader nib or a stub nib. It's the only way that you'll really be able to get the full effect of the ink. And then the next one is Ferris Wheel Press Dearest Navy. So it's more of a blue black. And this one was again sent to me by Cecilia of Scientists, Scientist Plans. And this one actually had a really, really good ink flow. I need to use my samples more. It's basically the point of this whole video. <laughs> The next one is another one sent to me by Cecilia. It is Ferris Wheel Press Glimmering Grayish. So it's basically got a gray undertone with gold shimmer. I'm using this currently in my Le Bon 325, and it's actually a fun ink. But again, I feel like you really need a wet flowing nib or a broader nib in order to use these shimmering inks. The next one is Ferris Wheel Press Lady Rose and Gold, and this one was given to me by Sandy love this ink. I cannot find this ink anywhere. It's such a beautiful light dusty pink with gold shimmer. Excellent, excellent shimmering ink. And the next one was sent to me by Corolla. It is Ferris Wheel Press Land of Shangri-La and it's kind of this dark brown and I feel like it's a bit of silver shimmer. A really interesting one actually. And I feel like I would use this in the fall or if I wanted to use this in a more professional setting and then have it shimmer just a little. And then the next one is sent to me or was sent to me by Cecilia. It's Queen and Castle. So it's like this mustardy yellow with rose gold shimmer. Who knew that the two would go together? But they really do. They really do. I feel like I need to use this in the fall or maybe why do I have to stick to a specific season with certain colors? Let's just use it. Let's just use all the inks. And on the next page, we have Ferris Wheel Press Roaring Patina Black. I purchased this from Van Ness. What I like about Van Ness is that they also do four milliliter samples. So you do get quite a lot with a sample without having to commit to buying a full bottle of ink. And then the next one is Ferris Wheel Press Story Blue. This one was sent to me by Cecilia. I really, really like this blue. It's like a periwinkle blue. It doesn't look like it on camera, but it's like this nice blue. And then I feel like it's got a little bit of like a pink undertone to it. If you hear groaning in the background, that's Lucy sitting on my lap. The next one is Ferris Wheel Press Stroke of Midnight, another sample that I bought from Van Ness. And it's this dark blue black with a bit of silver shimmer it reminds me of diamine arabian nights and i really really liked that ink so i'm excited to use this one maybe in january maybe i need to use all of the blues in january then the next one was sent to me by corolla and i really like this one it's ferris wheel press the velvet ballet so it's this kind of red burgundy with rose gold silver i think it's rose gold shimmer but it looks silver I think it's silver. Beautiful ink. And I think this one would be great to use in February. So it's like wintry, but also Valentine's Day. And then the last one on this page is Ferris Wheel Press Twinkling Tea Party sent to me by Corolla. And it's this really nice green with a copper shimmer. I love how Ferris Wheel Press use so many different types of shimmers and just make these different combinations of inks. Then on the next page, we are going to start with J. Herbon or Jacques Herbon, Emerald de Chavour, Emerald of Chavour. I had always wanted to try this ink because so many people had recommended it. And it's this teal with red sheen and gold shimmer. It's, I think, when shimmer really started to take off was because of Emerald of Chavour. I'm, I'm excited to try this. Then the rest of this page will be Le Bon inks, the first being Le Bon Aphrodite. So I bought a four mil sample from Van Ness Pens, and you guys know how I feel about dusty pinks, and Le Bon Aphrodite is definitely that color.
I loved the flow of this one. I used this a couple of months ago. A really, really good ink. Le Bon inks actually really, I really like them. The next one in the Le Bon lineup is Demeter, and this is a brown. There's not much I can say about brown. <laughs> it does shade well, but it is a brown ink, and brown inks I don't use very often, so I'm glad that I only have a sample. Then the next one is Le Bon Hera, and it's like a darker green teal, and I really like this color. It's almost turquoisey green, but it's dark, darker. And I feel like that suits the name Hera very, very well. Then the last one on this page is Le Bon. It's sky blue Hermes. And I really like the light blue of this ink. It's so fun, this light blue. And it's like the color of the sky, which, I mean, Hermes is the messenger god. But, you know, I don't know how the two <laughs> correlate. And then the last one in the Le Bon line is Zeus Purple, and it does remind me of Yamabudo, Pilot Orochi, Orochizuku Yamabudo, and it even has a little bit of like a gold sheen around the edges. Then the next brand is Monarca, and I've never tried these before, and these were sent to me by my secret Santa, and it was Monarca Cardona is the first one, and it's this dark burgundy with like a lime green gold sheen. Really, really interesting ink. Then the next one in the Monarca brand is Nopal, a darker green with a little bit of red sheen. Another very interesting ink, and I've never tried Monarca brand before. Uh, I think they are based in Mexico, so it was nice to hear about different brands, you know, just because of this uh, Secret Santa ink swap. Then the next one is Organic Studio Henry David Thoreau Walden Pond. I originally bought a full bottle of this. I don't know why, but I bought a full bottle from Goulet Pens and I ended up giving it away uh, and then just taking a little bit of a, a sample for my own personal use. I don't know why I bought this. It's a gorgeous ink, but it's like a heavy sheener and it takes forever to dry. Then starting all the Pilot Orochizuku, I wanted to try every single Pilot Orochizuku ink out there. So I bought as many samples as I could. First with Agisai. I like this because it's blue, almost purple, blurple. Then the next Pilot Orochizuku is Ama Iro. And I've heard a lot of people say that they really like this blue. It's just a very safe blue, but also some people say it's kind of underwhelming. I don't know. I just wanted to try all the Pilot Orochizuku inks. And the next one is Asa Gao. A lot of people who love blue love Asa Gao. So I thought, you know what, I might as well try it and see if it's something that will work for me. I like Pilot Orochizuku inks in general just because they're such a great ink, but they're also quite safe and easy to clean up. And you can really count on them. <laughs> they're very dependable. Then the next one is Pilot Orochizuku Fuyugaki. Most of these samples I got from Pen Chalet because Pen Chalet give you the four mil samples, but I like Fuyugaki because it's like, it, it's basically a winter persimmon is the name. And it's this pinky orange, this corally orange. And I really like that color. It's not too garishly orange for me. And then next we have Fuyu Shogun, which is a, I forget the translation, um, but it is a cooler toned gray for me. And you will see immediately underneath this one is another gray, Kirisame. And this one I feel like is leaning more towards the brown in terms of the gray. I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but when I look at the swatch itself, it really does look more brown than gray. Next page, we have Pilot Iroshizuku Mamiji. And this one is classified as more of a red, but on the page, it looks pink. But if I compare it to, you know, Tsutsuji, which is on the next page, this does look red. It's hard for me to classify because, I mean, depending on the light, it can look red and or pink, but it does have a little bit of that gold sheen. Next one is Pilot Orochizuku Murasaki Shikibu, or Shikibu. This one I got from Wonder Pens, and I really love this purple. Who knew that I would love purple so much, but it's such a wonderful, like very strong purple. And then the next sample I got from Pen Chalet. It was one of the three new inks that Pilot had put out in the last year or so, and it's Sui Gyoku. 
uh, another good green ink. I feel like leaning a little bit on the turquoise side of this. Then the next one I bought from Wonder Pens and it's Sio Ro. It's a teal, very similar to Kujiku, which is why I didn't buy this in a bottle, thank goodness, because I don't need, I don't need any of my bottles of ink really, but I didn't need a bottle of Kujiku as well as Hyoro. And then the last on this page is Pilot of Roshizuku Takesume, again from Pen Chalet, and it's a black. There's not much else I can say. It's a black ink. That's all. <laughs> Then on the next page, we have Pilot Iroshizuku Tsukushi. I think this is one of the inks that they said that they were going to be discontinuing. And it is a nice brown ink with a little bit of green sheen to it. Brown inks, again, are ones that I don't use often, but I did want to try as many Pilot Iroshizuku inks as possible to just get a taste of what I liked. Then the next one is Pilot Iroshizuku Tsutsuji, another sample I got from Wonder Pens. And this one... I, fin I ended up finishing the sample by doing this swatch, but this one is definitely pink, like magenta pink with a little bit of gold sheen. If you put it next to Mommy G, you will be able to tell the difference. And then Pilot Hiroshizuku Yamabudo. This is one that so many people recommend and so many people love. This one was just kind of meh for me. I'm glad I only bought the sample, but maybe just this type of color isn't really my taste. I don't know. It, it was just a little bit underwhelming to me. And then we have Pilot Hiroshizuku Yu Yaki, which is a bright orange. Not necessarily my taste with oranges. I don't ever remember using an orange for a currently inked. Maybe it's something I need to get into. Who knows? So those are all the Pilot Hiroshizuku inks. Now we're heading into Robert Oster. First being Australis Hydra. I don't know why, but I have a whole bunch of ink samples in this very similar shade of blue, yet I haven't used them yet in a pen. Why? Why do I need to buy all the samples and the inks? I don't know. Next, we have Robert Oster Avocado, and I bought this one from Penchelle, and I love this one. Love this one. I won't ever buy a full bottle. I'll buy another four mil sample should I ever run out of this one, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous green. I love green. The next one is Robert Oster Chartreuse, and I always, for some reason in my head, thought Chartreuse was a green, but really, it's yellow. It's a nice yellow, but depending on what type of pen you have it in, it can be difficult to read. So be careful what nib you put it in. Then the next one is Robert Oster Claret. So as the name suggests, it's going to look a little bit like red wine. And it's this, it is kind of like a red wine purple. I never thought I would like purples, but I really like these. Then we have Robert Oster Gold Antica. I love this brown. It's like this yellowy brown. I've used this in my Pelican M400 and it matched perfectly. It's such a great ink. It shades beautifully. And then you look at the one underneath it, which is Robert Oster Khaki. And they look so similar right next to each other. But I know some people say that there is a huge difference between the two. And you can kind of tell it in the different, when the ink pools, you can really tell the difference between the two. Then on the next page, yes, there are more, more pages. We get into Robert Oster Peach, and this is actually a cute orange. That's the only way I can describe it. It's cute orange. And then getting into a shimmer ink from Robert Oster. I love this one. I bought this from Goulet Pens. It's Rose Gold Antica, one of my favorites from Robert Oster. I really like the pink with the shimmer. No, I will never buy a full bottle because I do not need a full bottle. I will probably try and purchase another sample from somewhere, but it is, I highly recommend Rose Gold Antica. Next is Sydney Lavender. So it's kind of like a black purple, purple black. Really good if you want to, if you work in like a professional setting and want to use a colored ink without being so outlandish. S Sydney Lavender is a good one to go with. And then we have Robert Oster Tranquility, another sample I bought from Goulet Pens. I bought over a year ago and I still haven't used in a pen. This tells you a lot about my ink buying habits, that I need to slow down and just use what I've got. Then we have Robert Oster Violet Clouds. I've used this in a pen and I actually really liked it. This was fun to use. It's kind of a light, 
very light lavender purple with silver shimmer. And I think I actually, did I finish the whole sample? I'm just checking the bottle. Did I finish the whole sample? I feel like I did. I feel like I did. I think I finished the whole sample, which I'm happy about. On the next page, we get into Sailor. So we have Sailor Ink Studio 224, which I think drew of Goulet Pens named Thunderfluff because it's hard to describe the color other than like Thunder Fluff or Unicorn Poop. <laughs> Next we have Sailor Ink Studio 264 and it's kind of like a bluish teal turquoise. I still need to, I need to go back to Leanne's video on the difference between turquoise and teal. Then we have the Sailor Shikiori 50th anniversary and this one was sent to me by my secret Santa. I really like the color of this, very similar to you know, Kitsune, Biori, or even Inaho. I like that kind of olive green, brown, dusty brown ink. Then we have, I love these, Sailor Tinterias Agave. Again, sent to me by my secret Santa. I love this kind of grayish blue, this very cool tone grayish blue. I feel like I need to use this in a pen really quickly here. And then we have Sailor Tinterias Blue Corn, really, really pretty dark purple with a little bit of like gold sheen in there. Another interesting ink and again, sent to me by my secret Santa. Then we have on, on the next page, Sailor Tinterias Homemade Tortilla. I almost forgot to write the name down of this one. This one was another ink sent to me by my secret Santa, and I really love this color. It does look like a homemade tortilla, this kind of mustardy brown, a really gorgeous color, but I really, really liked the collaboration between Sailor and Tinterias. I believe this is a brand based out of Mexico. And then the last one from my secret Santa was Sailor Tinterias Spicy Chipotle. And this one looks exactly like the name. It is definitely a spicy Chipotle sauce that looks like it's been splatted or swatched, splatted, is that a word? Swatched on my ink journal. I really like this color. And now that I look at it, there's a little bit of green sheen around the edges too. The next one, I felt like I needed to try all of the Yurameku inks. Why? I don't know, but I felt like I needed to try all of them. So I bought samples from Goulet Pens as well as Yoseka Stationery, and this first one is Ama Moyoi. And it's kind of, you know what? I'm gonna have a hard time explaining all of these Yurameku inks because some of them look very, very similar, but they have these chromo shading properties where you can see a little bit of the purple and the green and even the Akuya looks very similar, but it's got kind of like a pink undertone. And then Sailor Yurameku Itazora is more of a blue, but you can still see a bit of the green and the purple and the pink in that chromo shading. These are also interesting. And what I love about these is that depending on what paper you're using, these colors look extremely different. Then on the next page, we have Sailor Yurameku Kang Yu, and this one looks like a darker purple with a little bit of the pink in there. I haven't used I haven't used this one yet, obviously, but it does look like a darker purple on camera. And then we have Sailor Yurameku Kyoku. This one is like a lighter pink. And then when you have the ink pooling on the edges, there's a little bit of like the dark purple around these edges. Really interesting. Like when you write with it, you actually don't know how it's gonna turn out necessarily. The next one is a little bit different from the rest of them. This is uh, Kyokuya, and this is a green. It definitely is a green. Um, in terms of the chromo shading properties, I don't feel like it has as many properties as the other inks. This one is definitely dark green. Then we have Sailor Yurameku Seki, and I really like this one. It's, it starts off with like a little bit of a dusty purple pink, and then you've got the, the chromo shading with the pink and the green. I don't know how Sailor does this. And then last in the Yurameku line is Yoi. And this one is like, a, is a gray with a bit of purple. So you can see on this page how different they look, but also how similar. I don't know how to describe that. And then the last that I am sampling, there's only two left, I promise, is the first one is Tatcha Set. Timi Dori, and this one was sent to me by Leanne. This is a kind of dark teal, and it's got a bit of red sheen. 
but it's not like a crazy sheener like Walden Pond is. And then the last one she sent me is Taranishi Opera Rose. I love this one. When Leanne swatched this, I was like, I hope she sends me a sample. And I'm so glad that she did. So what I do in between each of the pages, because I don't do the ink swatches on the backs of the ones that I just did, because look at this shadowing and the bleed through. What I end up doing is I take my Tombow Mono Air Permanent Adhesive and I place it down on the page and I literally glue the two pages together so it doesn't have the skipped pages that you can see and it's also, it makes it for an easier flip through experience. So here now is a quick flip through of my ink journal all set up for 2023. Actually, what I wanted to put is this I Love Pens, but I don't know if I wanna put it like here or here, maybe actually put it here. So this is a die cut from the Coffee Monsters Co. And I thought it would be perfect to put it on my 2023 ink journal. Do I wanna put it there or right in the middle? You know what, I'm gonna put it as, as in the middle as I can put it. <laughs> Cute. And then I skipped this first page because it's that would have been so hard to write on. Uh, and then I have my index basically of my ink journal. So I have a list of all the ink bottles, what page it's on. And then I have a list of all the ink samples. And I just, instead of putting every individual bottle or every individual ink, I just broke it down into the brand name. And then I have the index or the table of contents for all of my pens. And I still left a few pages for this table of contents because I do expect to be filling this up. So then on that first page here, we have the ink bottles that I'm starting with in January of 2023. So Colorverse and Diamine, and then a few more Diamine. I love the crinkling of these pages. And then some more Diamine, and then Ferris Wheel Press, and then Herbon. I love this page. And then Le Bon Noodlers, Pelican, and Pilot Orochizuku. More Pilot Orochizuku. Roar and Klingner. Sailor. More Sailor. And then Troublemaker and Visconti. And then moving to ink samples where instead of doing four to a page I did five to a page and then put it so that you can see ten when the book is open like this and then I showed you guys how I basically glued these two empty pages together I actually really like I feel like it's a work of art looking through all of these ink samples especially all the shimmer I love that. I love having like a catalog of what I'm starting the year with. I don't expect to buy a whole ton more of ink samples in 2023, but it is nice to see what I'm starting the year with. Really like that. And then it'll be good for me to look back on what I do have. Even if some of these do end up getting finished, I'll know what I've tried. Therefore, if I do want to buy any in the future, I'll know, okay, I've tried something very similar. Do I really want to try something similar to this if I didn't like the previous one? So like, for example, where is it here? Did I have it or I did not? I didn't end up putting it in here. Um, oh, why didn't I put it in here? because uh, I ran out of the Black Swan with Australian Roses. That one I had a sample of. It was okay, it wasn't my favorite. And then Sailor. The pages did get a bit wrinkled up when I glued them together, but it's not a big deal to me. And then uh, Tatch uh, and uh, Taranishi. And then Fountain Pens as of January, 2023. I've dedicated a page to each fountain pen. What I'm gonna do is basically write what I think of them, what works, what doesn't, things like that, and dedicate a whole page to that pen. And I basically put every pen in here along with the date that I purchased it. And I'll also be keeping track of, you know, what inks I've used with it and how they perform together. So then when I get to the end of that particular section, 
this is basically where the rest of the journal will start. So from here, I think I'm gonna label this as January, 2023, and you'll have my currently inked in here, any new pens or inks that I acquire in that time, and then go from there. So basically from this point on, it will just be a chronological archive of anything else that I acquire, any ink explorations that I do, or things like that. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how I can fill this up in 2023 and on. I don't think I'll fill this up in just 2023. This will be just a great archive to keep going for who knows how long. But it'll just be so nice to look back and hear all those crinkly pages and just see how this hobby goes moving forward. All right, if you guys stuck around this long, thank you so, so much. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.